and we're live hi everybody <laughs> wow blow that mic out <laughs> so how are you how have how have your holidays been ah kind of a mixed bag um oh. well like we had our our Thankfully, I don't think our pipes froze. Actually, they may have frozen, but like we had enough water pressure that was down that they didn't burst. But we had no water for a couple of days and we weren't entirely oh, yeah. sure. The, yeah. the weather was so cold and we weren't entirely sure what the issue was. So there was some some figuring that out. Um, and, and a bit of hijinks ensued. <laughs> um, That's one way to put it. <laughs> Well, like we have, we have lots of relatives in the area and my parents are out visiting my brother in California. So we're just like, all right, we'll just bunk there, you know? So we went over to shower before going over to relatives house for like Christmas. So this, this may actually have been Christmas morning itself. Mm -hmm. Well, with my parents being out of town, <laughs> they had turned the thermostat down and the water heater off and before things so... got heated up we're like they have an older house and like we call them we're like um nothing's happening and the water's still cold and the house is still cold so like we don't want to get into a what do we do <laughs> and they're, they're like well we've been talking about maybe it's time to update the system so then we're like okay get on the phone with my in-laws and say, hey, can we come over to your house and shower before going over to lunch for Christmas? And they said, yes. So we packed everything back up and got back in the car to go to the other set of parents' house. And so, yeah, they were... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Andrew is so right. I you, like You do like food. your food. I like food. Golly gee whiz, I like food. And the pizza is not here yet. I'm being very patient, though. I, I, I had I had some toast to tide me over. How has your today been, Steve? My today has been lovely. Thank you for asking. As I understand, the weather has been quite nice there. Uh, for late December, the weather today has been lovely. It was in the upper 40s. I went for a walk this afternoon. Woohoo! Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's been nice. And uh, My shirt lies. Yeah. I went for a walk as well. It says run. <laughs> it says run, Tennessee. I I think I actually was in Tennessee. I think like just across the state line. Not you by much. You went to the sculpture park. Went to park. the sculpture park. Yeah. Yep. In fact, if you want to pull up them pictures that I sent you, it was it was a, a gorgeous day here as well. And I grabbed a couple of, of snaps with the some of the some of the Yay, pizza. Some of well, the uh I mean... I didn't. I haven't saved them. I'll have to do that. Do you do you, what, do you okay. want to show everybody the pictures? I did, did. We can put. You can. We can do it now, or you can put them in the thing, or we can just talk about it, and everybody will just have to use their imagination. Why don't you? Why don't you show people the pictures on your Friday live stream? That see, see, this is why I keep you around because you have occasionally good ideas. Well, yeah, and then I don't have to throw something together <laughs> on the show that I wasn't on. prepared for. It. <laughs> I do this all the time, but it's more because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I am an amateur. I do it for the love of the craft, not for the money. Because <laughs> there really ain't much money in it for me. Oh, well, kind of that's fantastic. Oh, wow, that's that's terrific. Now, do you? I, do hope, you, I hope it was a good not... home cooked meal. Oh, yeah, that's also important. Do you not cook, Vilcata? Andrew, I'm guessing you mean the wind and... I'm very curious about the wind and air heating, uh, powering your house. I would assume you mean the wind and maybe the sun. I'm very curious about that. Da, 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 da. You, you, yeah, you, you've, never, you've never heard of air, air generated power? <laughs> I have not, Steve. Neither have have I. you? Neither have I. Okay, okay. No. Until, well, until just now when Andrew mentioned it. Until, yeah, Andrew's talking about it. I think Andrew's like, I, I think Andrew's uh, 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 de deceptivizing us. I, I find that outrageous that you would accuse. Indeed, indeed. Absolutely my, one outrageous. One of my most loyal viewers and a channel member 
uh-huh. and a patron. You were just so obviously outraged. I am outraged on Andrew's behalf. Ah. See, Volcata, it just it just depends on how broadly you define cooking. For example, does combining cereal with milk count as cooking? They're ingredients, See, would, they are mixed. I would say it doesn't unless you apply heat. Okay, the application of heat is necessary for something to count as cooking. Yes. Ah. Uh, yes. Because how else does one cook if one does not heat one's food? Andrew is defending his, his use of the phrase wind and air with stupid science. Wind and air being, you know, yeah, air being a necessary ingredient for wind. So doesn't that make it redundant then? Or does that make it thorough? Redundant. Okay. Oh. Andrew, Andrew, so Vokata, you, uh, Vokata check. agrees with me. Okay, okay. Uh, hence, yeah, hence. yeah, Andrew. Not only is Andrew sending me a check, it's a fancy British spelled check. With a Q. Yeah, and you don't buddy. Even, and not the Q you gotta wait in line for. da da ching No. Uh, hey, noise. Make well, a no salad. Sal- you, well, you, you can't cook ice cream, no. You'd melt you it. Can, it actually, no, 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 no. You, you, you can cook to prepare it. Some ice cream involves making custard, well, which is then yes, cool. as a part of the preparation. Yes, you, but you, once you it's cook, ice cream, right? But once it's ice cream, like you cook in some in some recipes, you cook it to make it ice cream. Yes, Philip. Exactly. If you warm the milk in the microwave before adding your cereal, that's a cook prep. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. If you like your cereal with with <laughs> warm milk, <laughs> oh wow, that made you go full. I love Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> blow out your oh your mic has a safety feature on it apparently <laughs> i just have it turned down oh no we spell it we, we we spell it with a ck andrew we do spell it pro- we don't do we don't do anything properly andrew we're we're yankees we changed the spelling of a bunch of words back in the late 18th century just to piss you all off yep just to be like, we're not spelling just, it just, in, just in case that whole revolution thing wasn't enough. It just it, it, That was the passive-aggressive part of the revolution. Yep. Well, that was like, one drinking, of them anyway. We're, we're drinking coffee instead of tea, and we're changing the spelling of a whole bunch of words. Getting rid of all those extra U's and the Q's. That's right. We'll put a CK, <laughs> we'll put a CK everywhere we can. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys know what I mean. And y'all ain't, well, some of y'all ain't, most, most of y'all, some of y'all ain't even patrons. You know where that's going. You don't need to be patrons to know where that's going. Oh, golly. And I can tell I was outside today because my hair is just like saying, ah, he played. <laughs> so. Yes. Um, yeah, it's been a nice couple of weeks. I have not yet. I noticed that your, uh, ask away is already up for like week after next. Cause oh, yeah. I, well, I, I always, I, I, I always set the next one up right after, right after it's, it's over. Yeah. When, when one ends, the first thing I do is set up the next one. Yeah. I know it's so responsible. And there have been times I've done it that way, but sometimes I'm just like, okay, I made it. That's all I got. <laughs> Like the you just need to go over, and like I'm heading I straight to done. the tub. I'm going out that door, across the hall, and in the next one because that's where the bathroom is. Run that bath water, get those scented Epsom salts, put my hair up. I'm done. <laughs> hey, Snake Big Cat, glad you could drop by for a few minutes. Oh, um, Snake Big Cat, I would uh, well get ready for that one shot, but I would love to know more about it sometime. You can tell me how it went tomorrow. Yes, tell and Dana all about it on on on, on my on, show because then Dana's Steve won't show. be Steve won't be able to complain about it like where you can hear him. You can just mute him in the chat. It'll yeah, be fine. I, well, no, I'll just I'll just complain about it out loud in my house where nobody can hear me because like, oh, nobody Jesus. cares. We all love we all we all love role playing games. I, Actually, I, I don't care. play role playing games care. all that much. I care. You and care I'm what somebody. you think. I care. I care very much what I think. Yes. 
I put a lot of stock in my opinion. Yep. Yep, Volcata. I'm 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 gonna I will I will uh, Steve, will you remind me y'all can remind me to do that when the show's yeah. over and I'll I will try. I'm actually gonna attempt to stay up tonight. Oh, because that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Um oh, yes. So Duolingo has happy hour, and I think in my time zone it's from eight to nine. I think I think there's extra XP. Plus I have um Oh yeah, I have an, an XP boost saved up because I, I did an early morning. I did several early morning lessons. Y'all, I'm in the Diamond League. And right. Yeah, check up. Get, get, get us an exact I don't know where I'm standing. At. I'm did, did, did. uh where am I at here? Well, as of so it starts on Mondays. And like Monday morning, I woke up, I'm like, okay, it's morning, I'll do a lesson. So I did a lesson. And um, I was immediately at like number three yeah. in the Diamond League from one lesson. Half an hour later, wonk, 29. <laughs> Everybody else woke up. But now. You're still second place. Hell I'm still yeah. in second place. Samuel, I'm coming for you. I'm going, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to you got it. You finish got this, this week number one in the Diamond League. Oh, you got so. this. And by the way, um, Andrew, that's really cool. Thank you for spreading the word about the Ensign's Log. Yay! Okay, so Radical Bacon right now, um, what am I doing right now? Right now I'm on French and I'm also studying Portuguese, but this, this week, um, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm going back because you get more XP for a unit that you finished. There are, there are eight like tests that if you pass them, you get 40 XP per test. And you have to pay like their little coins, but I have a bazillion coins saved up because I never use them. Um, you have to pay coins in order to take the test. So what I'm doing is I'm like blowing through as many of these as I can to get that up there. And it also helped that because uh, uh, I finished a friend's quest this morning. So I got like 30 minutes of an XP boost. And I was like, bam, 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 bam. So I have two languages that I'm working with and I'm trying to, I'm just trying to do everything that I freaking can <laughs> do it. And I work up at Rock City, but I work up at Rock City on Saturday, not Sunday. So right. Sunday all day, except for when we do the Ensign's Log, which reminds me, I need to text Jason to say yes. I was just going to ask you, did you text? You should, you should text Jason right now. You should text right him now? right now during your right show. Now. Okay, everybody, I'm not paying attention to, to y'all right now because Steve text said Jason. I should text Jason right now. So new text, text Jason and tell Steve. him that you're free on Sunday and we Jason can record Hardy. as usual. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Andrew Anna Tosofsky, we are watching Poirot tonight. We are watching uh, series one, episode two of Agatha Christie's Poirot, Murder in the Muse. And there's a link to the, it's on, the, the whole series is on YouTube in really high quality episodes. So we, Dana and I are going to be watching the episode as it is on YouTube. And there's a link to that in the chat on my pinned message. So if you need a copy of it to watch along with us, you can go to that one but yes Poirot, radical bacon two, with the ck the yeah, not not yes yeah, spelled the american way not the british yeah way. ironically although it's uh, wait sorry murder in the muse is set in england rock city is set in america <laughs> clearly i've not had enough caffeine or maybe we i've are, had too much we, we, IDK. we are um, we are americans watching a british series about a belgian detective sorry. but in, in in Britain. Yes, a Belgian detective in Britain. And it's M-E-W-S, not M-U-S-E, just in case anybody was wondering, not that you were. M-E-W-S, yes. Yeah, Rock City is Detroit, yes. But you don't quite. work in Detroit. I do not, I do not. That would be that would be quite a commute. It would for, be, for, be a, especially a, for one day a, a week. A difficult commute, yeah, a difficult commute. For Challenging, a especially this, this time of year. Yeah, no. No, no. No. Um, crockcity.com. Actually, let's just do it this way. crockcity.com, I think is the address. 
if the link doesn't work, then it's not. <laughs> um, Jason says, yay. So apparently he's around. He's just not bothering with our stream. Hi, Jason. He's 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 busy. He does he hasn't he doesn't have time to hang out with us and and, and watch not. Poirot. He's missing out. That's all I'm saying. Actually, it's not all I'm saying. I'll have lots to say, but that's okay. I'm so, so ready. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. We're gonna watch Poirot. Um, so yeah, as I just said, we're watching uh, Agatha Christie's Poirot. Poirot. Poirot, season one, episode two, Murder in the Muse. Um, so if you are, and just uh, just a, a note, if you are watching it on YouTube along with us, like Dan and I are, um, and you don't have YouTube premium, make sure that you have an ad blocker enabled that works on YouTube because we are going to be watching it straight through. We're not going to be watching ads or anything. So no um, stopping. Yeah. And if you do, yeah, and as always, if you do need to stop or you need to catch up or whatever, the time code is right up there. And oh, that sorry. would be <laughs> right up there. <laughs> no, ups, the time code is up. The chat is down. The time code is up. But, chat's uh, down. See, the chat's always over there for me. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about people watching the actual video. No, like watching when I stream. watch when I watch you live stream, the chat's over right. there. Well, yeah, the, yeah, but but I put the chat on screen with us too. Oh, but see. Oh, okay, that's right. Because there's like a little delay thing. So, but anyway, the, the time code is up, is up above us. So if you need to catch up or resync or whatever, uh, you can do it with that. Um, yes, exactly. Will Frank, we're Americans. I know. British made ser we can read it. His name should be David. His name is clearly David Suchet. I'm glad that that was important enough that you felt the need to shout over me. I'm sorry. You know what I, no, do, do you know what I love? Here's no, do you know what I love? Do you know what I love? Do you know what I love? And this, I'm being sincere about this. No. I'm excited. I have pizza I'm and being, I like I'm, 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 I'm being completely sincere about this. I love the fact that you interrupt me constantly and I almost never say anything. But if I interrupt you once, you are like, I wasn't finished. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not saying that to give you shit about it. I sincerely, I sincerely love that. Your adorable hypocrisy. <laughs> Hypercrustic. I no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, are you? It's fine. Are you ready? It's not fine. Uh, are you? Are you? Are you ready to watch the episode? Uh, okay, I will. I I, you ready to go? Your your pause yeah. to zero and all that. Okay. Yes. Of course. I'm going. I'm going to count us in from three. I'll do three, two, one, play. Everybody hit play when I say play. And we will watch Poirot season one, episode two, Murder in the Muse together. Ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, <laughs> play. Ghost Will has it right. <laughs> <laughs> yes okay we're gonna start five minutes later okay we're gonna start uh the timeless theme song and the weird <laughs> opening credits i do like the train yeah. The train is all oh, the art. The Art Deco train is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but the weird overlay stuff. No, thank you. We could have gone without the, you know, the '90s stuff. Uh -uh. Poirot smiling at you like a creep. Like, hello. <laughs> I understand everything. I know what you are thinking now. Yeah, two fifty-five AD. They are extremely '90s. I think the entire look of the '90s was patterned off of these opening credits. Look what we can do with computers, guys.
Ya veo. Uh, apparently not, Radical Bacon. They're talking about uh, blowing up Parliament, so this must be Guy Fawkes Day. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the something, something, I forget. But you're supposed to remember. I forget. Don't trip over those children, Hastings. Oh, there you go. You little whelps. Once the idiot friend, always the idiot friend. Ah, uh, yes. Ooh, that's where the murder's gonna be. The title said so. I wonder if it's Hastings who gets murdered. Probably. This collar is too tight for Poirot. Um, Mr. Poirot. Hastings was right for once. <laughs> Why not? I mean, Ghost Will, that's not dudes. That, that's everybody. Yeah, really. You know women always go into the dentist. <laughs> no, no, no. All I had was the appointment with the dentist. Done. I remember this. I mean, if you're going to fake a suicide, you should at least, you know, try to do a good job. Yeah, 255, Eddie, I can kind of see that.
Thank you for the information, Kara. It's intriguing. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's a little trickle, but that's all it is. Just a little. She used a very small caliber. A very ladylike amount of blood. I don't know. Good question, Radical Bacon. I mean, technically, they're not cops. They are investigators. You know what I'm saying? Just get a secret out of my laptop here. That's a weird name. Uh, 255 AD, there are a number of, of characters, uh, of situations that can be read that way. Maybe she just was feeling creative in her final moments. Uh, no, I, I think I think there, there's more. That's part of the the reveal. <clears throat> yeah, very, very much the 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 stiff upper, upper lip, you know, repression type stuff. A lot, uh, I think this, this cast does a very good job of showing what goes on below the surface.
I'm a character from a Dickens novel, I am. That's right. Hustle, boy. Hustle. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, Kara, uh, Christy herself lampshades it. Um, when she has in one of her Tommy and Tuppence series, they, uh, the, they're playing at being detectives and they, they pretend to be literary detectives when they're on their cases. I'll tell you, remind me, Stephen, I'll go over this one of my favorite bits at the end. <laughs> okay. Her Barbara name's Allen, Barbara Allen. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Well, twas in the merry, merry month of May. And apparently you can. He shifts to the past tense really easily. <laughs> Shout through the heart, and you're to blame. Yo. You see, I'm very important. I can't mm -hmm. talk to you just now. <clears throat> Please take all the time to grieve that you need. I can tell you're very upset. Okay, so he is definitely the murderer. <clears throat> yes, I also think that Hitler chap is quite impressive. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this reminds me of 
Uh, no, not Catamong Prison's brain. The short story. <clears throat> Thank God you came is the, is the last line. MP and PM, very different. Different. I'm at the most serious. Miss Lemon. Oh, I don't do my laundry, Faro. <laughs> I did neither. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> No, 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 Radical Bacon. We're seeing that that <laughs> Hastings, Hastings is racist. Hastings and Miss Lemon are racist. <laughs> yes. And Poirot is, Poirot is realizing, oh my goodness, these people are immigrants like me. They don't understand. What the heck did you guys tell them? Yeah. And Poirot may be, may may also be racist, but this is this is specifically showing that Miss Lemon and Hastings are. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> there is more. I think I remember this one. What's with that mustache? Oh, I love this. Ah, <laughs> oh, love it. What's this dog in the nighttime crap then? Uh huh. The nose knows. Uh, Poirot is Belgist. That's again. <laughs> I believe he is Flemishist. Flemishist. Well, Frank, I will say that sometimes speaking more slowly can help.
What about screaming at them in condescending pigeon English? Does that help? Are you just going to repeat what I say? Um, radical bacon, I don't think so. I think you would be confused, honestly. <laughs> you think Poirot is Dutch? I think it's like, oh, how very interesting. Language, please. Yes, indeed, Gus. Just one more thing. <laughs> uh, Kata, why do you like her? <laughs> Hi. He just eats it. We'll have to break it open. Where's my axe? Lovely how they just remember things. Isn't it? By them? the way, by the way, are you guys gonna take Barbara's body out at some point? It's still up there. Can you use it to open the closet, please? <laughs> it's Harry Potter's room. You should knock first. There's a camera back here. Kara in the pursuit of justice. She definitely comes across as very nervous, having, you know, not been accidentally couldn't find the key.
What are you trying to say? Surely you don't suspect me. I suspect everyone, and don't call me Shirley. <laughs> and then at the House of Lords. Mm. And then I went home and murdered Barbara. Oops. I can't say as I did. What's all this then? One last question. Did you kill her? Because if you did and you tell us, it's going to save us a lot of time. Uh, Kara, there's that, but there also is, is racism in there as well. And in nationalism, uh, a lot of, you know, that, that funny little foreigner he is. Yeah, yeah. Not a better person necessarily, just just of a different sort. It's important that each person, each type of person, knows their place. Exactly, Kara. Oh, it's the first scene of Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. I know you love that, Dana. <laughs> Terry O'Quinn in a brilliant cameo.
Yeah, you tell them. Busted. Are you suggesting I murdered her with my cufflink? God, it's happening just like my horoscope warned me it would. <laughs> that golf. at the golf course. No. Oh no. Oh no. This, She's going this to This is like it. the worst golf lesson I've ever seen. Oh, oh, 
Oh, Jesus. Check out that form. I have to go take a crap. Do not wait for me. <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth. Don't act suspicious. <laughs> no, Kara. that time <laughs> Uh, the tense is wrong, darling.
I'm so surprised. Kara, no. Kara, that's also true. Yeah. Intended to be. I mean, yeah.
Hastings. <laughs> A kipper. <laughs> Ain't I great? You know, I was really thinking that there was going to be some resolution of the collars. That just that didn't come back up. Resolution of the what? The collars. His collars. Oh, right. Because the of the laundry. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Ah, Poirot. That was a good episode and a clever, uh, a, a clever little crime. Mm -hmm. She's done that more than that. That was that. That's that's the same thing happens in the short story I was thinking of. I was like, I was like, this feels and, and she she does not so much recycle plots as she recycles character types. And once you recognize who the characters are because it's very much about class and your place and the relationships between the characters and if once you recognize sort of how they're supposed to relate to each other and where they're out of place you can find things you, you the, the yeah. clues don't matter <laughs> the clues absolutely don't matter they're just like oh that's neat that's how it was done okay don't care Um, Kara, it's, it, that's, that's ambiguous. Um, because, uh, because he's, uh, he, he's a major, so he's in the military and it's, it's implied that he's a bad sort already. So the yeah. arrest won't affect him. If on the other hand, it had turned out that the MP had been implicated, he'd be, he'd be done. I do. I mean, no, no, no. Okay, uh, just, uh, hang on, um, please. Two fifty-five eighty. Um, Hastings. Uh, do you mean Paro? See the blotting paper. Paro noticed that underneath, uh, th there was no blotting paper. Um, the Freddie told Paro and Hastings that a letter had been posted. The the motor car boy, and. So there should have been blotting paper that was used. That's why Poro was going through the trash. There should have been blotting paper that was used to blot that letter. It should have been around, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it was it was gone. A little bit like the uh, the absence of the smell of cigarette smoke. Like, yes. Yes. Very yeah. much so. Something that should have been there was noticed to but be wasn't. missing. Yes. Yeah. I, I I don't know if she's again if the cigarette smoke thing is one that she's used repeatedly, but I remember the way it, it plays in my head is that Poro's going around, and then Hastings follows him around doing the same thing, going like, "What am I supposed to be smelling? I'm not smelling what are anything." Smelling for? <clears throat> or, or you know, or, or, or what do you smell? And Poro looks at Hastings and says, "Nothing, my friend." And Hastings is just like, "I don't understand." Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like the um, the curious case of the dog in the nighttime, which is exactly. From, Did you Sherlock hear the dog? Holmes no. Story. Yeah, that's the yeah, exactly what I did. Nobody heard a dog. Exactly. Yep, classic. Which is from? Do you know the story? It's from. Yes, can't tell you. You'll tell me, and I'll be like, yes, of course. Sorry. Silver nope. Blaze. Silver Blaze. Nope, didn't know that. I know, I know the, I know the the mention of the. I would not have been able to come up with that title. I'm not familiar with that one, or I've read it, but I don't remember the title. I I am. 
I mean, they, there's, so I, I wanted to talk about, so. Yes, I yes, the Tommy and Tuppence. With, the first one is The Secret Adversary. The second one, which is a collection of short stories. So the second one is they are partners in crime. And it's a series of short stories. They are setting up a detective agency and they've actually been contacted because the detective agency is a front for, um, they're trying to track down, they've been, they've been put in this particular office by the government because the government believes that this office had been set up by, I think some terrorists or something. Um, or uh, revolutionaries in, in, in some way, you know, some, you know, okay. anti-government, you know, spies, something, something to do with being spies, which is a tie into the previous, um, th their first novel. So they set it up that when they take cases, um, Tommy gets the idea that they are going to, they're going to examine the feature of the case and decide which literary detective it best fits. And then they're going to go on that case as though they are the detective in that in that author's work <laughs> and so and they, they follow they, that detective's methods yeah yes yes and it's it's so much fun because she absolutely lampoons everybody except holmes and watson holmes and watson aren't in it because poirot and hastings are also lampooning holmes and watson right and she absolutely does lampoon uh poirot and hastings and because um, I think it is that Tuppence is the one who says, who says, ah, the, this one will take the, the little gray cells and I shall be here. <laughs> and Tommy says, I think this will become, to, this adventure will be, will come to be known as the triumph of Hastings and Tuppence bless her heart. I love her so much. One of my favorite characters in any work ever says, no, my friend, once the idiot friend, always the idiot friend <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness abs 255 ad yes and a deconstruction of the entire genre she she has i her adventure stories her 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 pulp stories don't get nearly enough respect but they're just absolute fun so much fun and tommy and tuppence are in that vein um there's also the man in the brown suit catamount no catamount the pigeons i think is the one that's actually a paro mystery there's just there's a you know not a lot of them not as many as she did mysteries but her, her pulp novels are just so much fun they're so much fun and tommy and tuppence are just as characters absolutely delightful tuppence is everything everything that i want in a female character she is smart she is uh, very um, not what you want a character to be not a certain like not responsive like they're they do the thing first. Oh, active. A yeah, active, a not reactive. Yeah. And she just goes for it, and she, you know, gets into trouble, causes trouble. I mean, she is like pre Lois Lane. Lois. I was going to say she's Lois yes. Lane. Yeah. Yes, she is absolutely amazing. And um, to the extent that in their final uh, adventure together, N or M, when they're middle-aged, middle-aged, like my age, <laughs> at this point, I am, I am Elder Tuppence at this point, um, <laughs> the guy from the government comes back and um, he, he's just asking him how it's going to be done. And... Uh, he Tommy's like, look, do you have any work for us? Because you know we're really we're retired, we're really bored, we're doing fine. The kids are out of the house, da da da. And he's like, no, actually, you know, I have I have some work, but it's just office stuff, you know, nothing really important. And Tommy's like, what a bummer. Let me go get the tea. She comes back in, and they're talking about it, and he's explaining the work to Tommy. The phone rings. Tuppets goes to answer it, and she's you know she comes back and she says, look, my friend has asked me to come by. She says there's emergency, you know, something going on with her kids. She wants me to look after her kids. She can do this thing. She runs out the house. Anyway, so the inspector says, it's just as good that she's gone because I've got a case, but it's just for you. It's too dangerous for her. <gasps> and he sends him down to the seaside. This is, I think this is set just before or even during World War II when they're worried about what they called fifth columnists, as in people who were British, who were working for 
the Axis powers. And so the, Tommy is sent to the seaside resort and he goes in to luncheon as he arrives there. And there's Tuppence. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it, she's there as Mrs. Blankensop. <laughs> She's an American. She's got the accent. She's got kids. She's got photos. The whole shebang. She's got put all of us together herself, and she's beat him down there. <laughs> and uh, Tommy is uh, Tommy's not dumb. He's a little slow. Yeah, Christy often describes him as kind of like a terrier, but more, like across a, a terrier slash bulldog. As in, you know, he will get there. He's very persistent, and he doesn't give up. And, um, and he's not dumb. And Tuppence is not a put-upon wife at all. If anything, he's a bit of a put-upon husband. And uh, <laughs> like w w when they're early married, and she's like, she's like, you know, I, I really want something. Uh, being married to you is very nice, but you know, I, I really want something to do. And he, he, the way it comes, the, the way the dialogue is set out is being married to you is very nice, but she sighs and he looks at her and says, but what? <laughs> like oh i really want something to do so they talk about it and she's like of course there are always hats i found i saw a new lovely one at madame violet's and he says oh hats of course you know if that's all if you have nothing better to do she's like exactly if i have nothing better to do so anyway then so it turns out back to the third story in nrm that when she went to get the tea she had originally rung up her friend and said look wait three to five minutes and call me back and talk really loudly through the phone and be very excited. That's all I need you to do. I'll explain later. And then, so she comes in, you know, comes in, oh, no, no, my friend's in, lets the door bang on her way out, and then comes back in and listens to the whole thing. And so anyway, Tommy lets the officer know, and he's like, nope, it's fine. I should have had her in for the start. I should have known better. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh, it's so great. Um... I would, I would say it's got to be Max. It's got to be Max. Archie was the one that was very showy. She, I mean, that was the one. She was young. She felt she was head over heels for Archie. And he broke her. He really broke her heart. Um, Max, uh, I think, was was much, you know, kind of stodgy. You're much more, uh, uh, he reminds me of, what, what I know of him reminds me of the, the sort of Ruskell, you know. But, you know, kind of somebody you can count on. And that's really what I see in, in Tommy. Um, yeah, yeah, Tuppence is just fun. And, and yeah, not quite absolutely willing to hold a hand to the forehead and faint prettily if she thinks it'll get her what she wants. <laughs> so, yeah. I was watching, um, I saw a little snippet of a, an interview I guess yesterday with Ryan Johnson, he was doing, you know, going around doing press for Glass Onion and uh, someone asked him, is it difficult to write detective stories that are so self-aware? And he used Christie as an example and said, basically, well, I mean, detective fiction has been self-aware for as long as Ever. it's been around i mean it's yeah like yeah and i mean even you know holmes stories like i mean they there are multiple stories in the holmes canon that make reference to the fact that watson is writing all this stuff down and these stories are being published and uh, you know there's there's a lot of, it's not like super meta but there are acknowledgments of yeah. this is a detective story you know people are reading these <laughs> you know like so <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. So shall we play uh, Wordle? Yes, and before we do. Please. Um, are you aware of the real life mystery? The real life mystery that- you About Agatha Christie, more... that she disappeared. Uh, uh, yes, yes, and nobody knows like where she went or- Yeah, supposedly there was yeah. a special that came out recently and I, I watched it and they're like, okay, da, 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 we're gonna do the reveal. I forget what they came up with. And I'm just like, no. Because she flat out tells us, she tells us in one of her stories, it is, in fact, it's the second one in Partners in Crime. 
I think it's the second one. Might be the third, but it's the first one that they don't figure out. Um, or they, they, they do figure out, but not in the way that they intend to. Um, yeah, not, Karen, not, not so much lust, but more infatuation. Very much so. And um, at any rate, um, they're looking for the, the, this guy's wife has disappeared. And it seems that she's been kidnapped. And they're following all these leads. And finally, to, uh, Tuppence pulls Tommy aside and is like, look, let's just, we need to let this one go. And Tommy's like, what are you talking about? He's, she's like, I know where she is. We need to just let this one go. And he's like, what are you talking about? Where is she? And Tuppence says, getting thinner. And she had apparently, she, she had, she had put on some weight while her husband was away, but he apparently like hated fat women. And so she went to like a resort to slim up, but he came back earlier than she anticipated and she wasn't done with the uh, thing she yet. she was gone, yeah. And she was gone. And so he's like, what is going on? And I have always thought that, that because she was married to Archie at the time, and you know and, and and he she was she was never she could never like hold on to him and i'm just like i'm sure that that's what you know it two things first of all making herself you know more like the beautiful young woman who originally got his attention and second doing it in a sensational way to again attract his attention say pay attention to me you right blankety blank <laughs> yeah no i don't i don't believe th that it was a fugue i think it was entirely uh, uh an attempt to get archie to to give her the attention that she deserved she deserved better than him anyway so <laughs> so there you go yeah no no i mean mental break in the sense that that he did not care for her the way that she deserved and and she cared for him more than he cared for her, and and she was was not able to accept that for a long time. Yeah. Wordle. Wordle. Yeah, and she Wordle. she was never told, never told. She. Yeah, which is why it's. Still which is why it's still a mystery. Yep, she just kept that kept her mouth shut on that one. I, lots of pride. Lots of pride. <laughs> Mm. that's okay so this is today's wordle and for those of you who have not been with us before never played wordle with us before the way this works is dana is not actually looking at the wordle board but i do have uh, the dana, chat up you do have the chat up dana is only going by my description of it to her and so if you have not solved today's wordle and you want to play along with us in the chat, you are more than welcome to throw in guesses and suggestions and whatnot. But if you have solved today's Wordle, please do not give it away. Okay, are you ready? Um, Philip, I love that episode. It's the one with the spectroscope. That's what they need. They need a spectroscope. Please continue. Yes, now I'm ready. Okay, so heart? Yes. The, the first part of the patented Dana two-part starter word. H-E-A-R-T, heart. And that gives us an E in the wrong place. Well, let's go with lions it. then. Lions. Somebody said something about Wordle that they yeah, thought we were going to get Radical Bacon in. said that they were curious as to how it was going to work out with this one. Okay, so lions. L-I-O-N-S. That gives us... An L and an I also in the wrong place. So we know that there's an E and an L and an I, but we don't know where exactly any of them are. So neither the E nor the I is the second letter. Exactly. Hmm. And no H, no A, no R, no T, no O, no N, and no S. <laughs> we do have we have an i and an e that were in the wrong place so the e yes hmm. not, okay the e and the i were the two and the yes. l was also in the wrong place and the okay l. it could be it could be glide because we haven't done a g and we haven't done a D, mm -hmm. 
and the L could be the second letter, and the I could be the third letter, and the E could be the last letter. Yeah, that would work. And I like the L as the second letter because that's that's a good letter combination. Go for glide. That sounds glide. like a good guess. G L I D E. Let's try. Empire that. Jeff agrees with you. It is not glide, um, and the L and the I and the E are all three still in the wrong place. Woo! No that's G, good. No, yeah, no G, no D. Yes. So, yes. So we know it's not a something L word. Um, Gus, it can't be piled because I cannot be the second letter. Right. So L isn't the second letter either. L That's isn't the second letter. Yeah. So that it sounds like we have a consonant cluster, then either I, E, or E, I. So I would go with E, I, or I, E, L, which is better. For the ending? Mm hmm. Hmm. It can't be files, Empire Jeff. I cannot be the second letter. Right. What about does spiel count as an English word? Wait, no, we can't have I, an S. Can't have an S. Oh, no, there's no S. Yeah, no. At this point, I'm, 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 Writing out words, I'm thinking consonant clusters at the beginning that don't have that, that, that have letters that we haven't. And L can't be the second one or the first one, so I'm thinking L is either the last or. Man, smile would work if we had the S. Yeah. Filed won't work because filed and field won't work. The I cannot be the second letter. And the E can't be the second letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, filed and field both have I as the second letter. Right, right, right. Okay. What about while? File would work. Well, there can't be an H. Son of a biscuit. Well, well we could try it just as... No. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, but we, I'm thinking consonant cluster at the beginning. Well, there. no, while wouldn't work anyway because I would be the third letter. Oh, man. Oh, oh. And he, and he would what... be the last letter, and it can't be that. Yeah. What was, what so was the, our third guess? The, glide. Glide, 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 so glide. The L, okay. can't, the, the L can't be the first or the second letter. The I can't be the second or the third letter. The E can't be the second or the last letter. Hmm. And there's no O. There's no O. We haven't tried a U. That's the only other vowel that we have unaccounted for. But if there's an I and an E, chances are there's not a U. Right. I feel like there's a, a, a consonant cluster at the beginning. Right. There's no R. Kind of, I mean, there, we have, yeah. There We're limited because we've that. used so many. We haven't tried a W. We haven't tried a P. And it's possible that one of the vowels is the first letter. Right. What was the third guess? Glide. So we know the Glide. L is not the second letter. The L isn't the second letter, right. There's no A for Wyland. Right. Hmm. I'm looking at my keyboard. Okay. Man, Wyland would have been fine, but no. <laughs>
It could be Impel. I M P E L. Um, Kara, there's Kara, and uh, there's no, there's no O. That's what H B Haga was saying. We we did yeah. lions, and lions told us there was no O. Um, you said Impel. I M P E L. Impel. I M P E L. And we haven't tried M or P, have we? Right. This is guess five. This is guess four. This is guess four. Hang on. No. That better, exile better not be it, Radical Bacon. It better not be it. It can't be exile because it's because... I can't be the third letter. Because glide, and okay. Be and, e can, and E can't be the last letter. And exile, yeah, because of glide. Would have to have the E, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. I, I was. I was about to. I was about to be prickly. I think <laughs> imp impel fits, and that's a good guess, Steve. Let's go for it. I trust you. you. Try impel. Okay. Yeah. I M P E L. Impel. That's, a that's it. Yes. Impel. Good job. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Steve, Steve. Yes, 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 yes. Hang, hang on a second. Let me let me switch over to. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, Dana. What were you going to say? Um, I wanted to tell you. Mm -hmm. You're right, Steve. You were right. Isn't that just the best feeling? It is. Or at it least is among the best. I mean, let's not get into you know comparisons here. It's, Comparison, it's, of it's, course, it's, the thief of joy. Being <laughs> being acknowledged as right is is way up there. So nice. It's way so nice. up there. And it, it it can, however, make you a, a bit of a bit of an ass, as we have seen with Paro. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, two fifty five eighty. Uh, I don't know about that. My guess, I would guess more that. Kind of like we see with uh, the dip, 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 um, Kenneth Branagh's version of Paro. I mm -hmm. think they, I, I would, I would more say they wanted to do something different with it than had been done before. Um, and and you can you can stretch it in that direction um, for to to really play up um, the, the domestic comedy. I don't think it's, I don't think it works as well, but. I say that having not seen it, but that the the yeah. the strength of their relationship is something that I really like about it. So knowing that makes me not really want to see it. But I mean, I, I can understand wanting to do something different from what's been done before. So and you have uh, you said you don't, onions. and you said you don't have you you don't have Netflix right now, so you haven't seen Glass Onion yet. I have not seen Glass Onion, no. I would love, maybe maybe sometime before you have to go back to school, we can watch it together on screen share or something, because I would love to know what you think of Glass Onion, because I thought Glass Onion was absolutely delightful. Maybe. That I'm might just, be something I'm just throwing like, it out it, there. I'm just, well, I'm just throwing cause, it out cause there. Because I, mean, I, I, I thought about it, but I'm just like, I'm like, I would have to pay attention, and I just, I'm not. Yeah. I'm we, feeling, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, just, I'm feeling like. I'm just like, saying it would be. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'm curious. It would be I'm cool curious to watch it. it. Yeah, it's very. It would be cool I think. To watch it's, it with I think. You. I think it was very good. I thought it was absolutely delightful from beginning to end. Um, um Kara, I, I agree, disagree with you about the mustache. Choices were made, <laughs> and that is a very bold choice. And I will say, I mean, that is definitely. You can see that the character has a mustache. That is definitely a statement piece. <laughs> I would have gone the other direction. Another mustache that would have been popular in, say, like the twenties, was the really thin pencil, like not size of a pencil, but looked like that sucker was drawn on with a pencil mustache. Mm -hmm. And Poirot is really all about precision. 
in like the way that he dresses. And so I think that would have fit the character more, but I think Branna wanted to take the character in a distinctly different direction. And so that yeah. I, I totally understand and respect that choice. Yeah. In part because he also goes through, he, he pulls it through in the rest of the, the way the character dresses and walks and things in, in that this character is very, you know, lush and vibrant, you know, it comes through in other ways too. It wasn't just the mustache. So, which is part of why I respect it as a choice, not the choice I would have made, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I yeah. liked, I liked, uh, Brana's Poirot. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I'm not as much of a Poirot fan as I am a Holmes fan. So I, my opinion on it isn't as strong, you know, as my, like my opinions of various actors who have played Holmes. Um, and I didn't really like in the second one in Death on the Nile when they sort of made they gave his mustache an origin story and made it like part of like a you yeah. know an old trauma from the world. I felt like that wasn't necessary and didn't really accomplish yeah. anything other than making something too more complicated than it needed to be. But but in general, I think Brana's Poirot was 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 just fine. And part yeah. of that is also that I I'm I'm a fan of Kenneth Brana. Like I think he's mm -hmm. a good actor. He's a ham. People don't get that about Brana. People talk about him like he's a great <laughs> actor. He's a ham. He's, he's such a, ham. a ham. He is a delightful ham, though. And we all of like the hams. great. Here, here's the thing. All of the great Shakespearean actors who are who who have had like notable film careers, like Brana, like Richard Harris, like Ian McKellen, like uh, Olivier. I mean, you could go on. They're all hams. They're Patrick all Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart for sure. <laughs> I Patrick was waiting for that one. They're all hams, every single one of them. It doesn't mean they're not brilliant actors, but they're huge, gigantic hams. Um, Vulcana, I like Downey's take on Holmes. It's a little bit like Brana's Poirot. Like it's not like, yeah, it's 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 a different take. Like like Dana was saying about Brana's choices is with the mustache and the look for Poirot. Like Downey's Holmes is not how I would do it if I made like a Holmes movie. But I thought it was fine. I thought it was good. Um it was different, you know. Ghost Wheel. They sit down at the same table and complain about publishers demanding that they write the character that they're tired of. <laughs> More Oh, uh, Radical Bacon. Imagine Avery Brooks as Holmes. Now, now you're talking. Now you're talking. The um the scene at the end of uh what is it? Blue Carbuncle when he tells the guy to get out. That's that would be Avery Brooks would have some fun with Get out. <laughs> Holmes is written to be played by a ham. A a very oh, large for sure. ham. Oh, for sure. That was what was so great about Jeremy Brett was that he 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 played him not that. just not just as a ham but as an energetic ham. His 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 version of Holmes is so energetic and so just like filled with electricity. He's always looking and moving and you know what I mean. There's one of my favorite moments of Jeremy Brett's Holmes is um, it's in the second stain where there's they're, they're in the the crime scene. And there's the carpet in the middle of the, you know, covering the floor. And he comes up with some excuse to get, uh, I think it's Lestrade, to get Lestrade out of the room. You know, and as the, the second that the police are out of the room, he dives onto the floor. <laughs> and is like searching for the, you know, he's, he's looking for a hidden compartment in the floor. Like the, the, the moment that he's alone, he's like on the floor searching. It's amazing. It's a great physical performance. So, shall we wrap this up? Yes, let's do. Yes. You have a stream on your channel on Friday. Yep, I need to get working on that sucker. <laughs> it's this one right here. I'm showing it to the people now. The Festive Friday Files. Do I have it set up or is that just the picture? Uh, that's I used the, the same picture. picture. Okay, because I used it's the same It's just the picture. picture. I know. Yeah. No, I don't know if you have it set up or not. But, I don't um, think I know. I need to get on that. Ah, you got to get on that. But, uh, oh, yeah, Radical it's, it's Bacon. Oh! Alan, Rick, Alan Rickman is Holmes. Oh, my heart. Yes, that would be so amazing. His, his, like, his, his performance. His condescension. 
Yes, his performance yes. in Galaxy Quest by Grab Thar's Hammer. What a savings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so what are we watching next? So yeah, I have a I have a stream on Friday, the on Friday files. YouTube.com slash Dana Cold Dares. Yes, this Friday indeed. at six at six PM 6 Eastern PM. time. Same same time. Not the different same channel. channel. <laughs> <laughs> Same time, different channel. Um, and uh, yeah, so and so think about think about because people don't do this. Think about the good things that have been going on in your life, with things that have been going on in the world that maybe might be different from the things that I share that you can share in the chat. Or there you go. And then um, next week, Steve, as I understand next it, next week, oh, next week we begin season four of Deep Space Nine. Now, the fourth season premiere of Deep Space Nine is a double episode, so we will be we won't be watching the whole thing. We're going to stop halfway through, and we will be watching it in two parts, even though it is on Paramount Plus in one part. I mean, unless you want to watch the whole thing at once, but I don't think you want to sit through the entire ninety minute episode in one sitting. I um, will be back at school, so I think I will right. be. I will be. That's what I figured. To, yeah, that, that's what I figured. So we're going to um, we're going to watch the first half of the Way of the Warrior, the season four premiere of Deep Space Nine, which is. The arrival on Deep Space Nine. Oh, Worf, right? Of Worf. Of Worf. One of my favorite characters in all of Star Trek. Oh, um, okay. So, yes, Worf comes to Deep Space Nine. That, so we'll watch the first half of that uh, next week. And then the week after that, we'll be back for another Poirot. And then the week after that, the second half of the way of the warrior so that's that's what's coming up um will frank okay steve now you've done it we just have to have a jeremy brett sherlock holmes watch party maybe one of these days maybe one of these days because i do love some jeremy brett sherlock holmes i also really like i mean only i think only four episodes of it survive but in 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 the 60s there was a bbc holmes show and for a few seasons of that um peter cushing played holmes and only a few episodes are still in existence and oh oh Peter Cushing talk about a guy who was and also he was he was Holmes in uh the Hammer F Studios film of Hound of the Baskervilles which I think is still probably my favorite Holmes film um yeah um when I went looking for um 13 at dinner um which is not a murder's now it's Dana White I can't remember things but, but my favorite my favorite part of the story um yeah it's a movie from the eighties and David Suchet is in it, but he's not Poirot. He's Inspector Jap. That's really interesting. I know, but we do have it. We do. It's not, it's the other title of it. It's not 13 and dinner. It's the other one. Oh that yes, that's right. I can't, I can't think. Yeah. But yeah, we will be because watching. Because the, the, the whole thing is 13 and dinner, 13 and dinner. The first person up is the one who's going to die. Like, it's a thing. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned, like, David Suchet playing a part in a Poirot project before his Poirot and playing a different character. Um, I think it was on stage, Jeremy Brett, before Jeremy Brett was Holmes in the TV series. Uh, he was in, a, in a, a Holmes play, and he played Watson, which <laughs> is really interesting to imagine. Like, Jeremy, yeah. you, you picture he's such a definitive Holmes, and you're like, he was Watson? Interesting. So. How did that work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and radical bacon. Bruce Campbell as Holmes. Yeah, Kara. Uh, yeah. Peter Cushing as Holmes and Christopher Lee is as, as as Henry Baskerville in the movie. Yes. Oh, perfect. My favorite. Uh, Bruce radical Campbell bacon. as Holmes. I'll have, to, I'll have to work on that. I'll have to work on that. <laughs> radical bacon is just being is just throwing shit in the chat now. I Bill mean, Nye as Holmes. <laughs> No, but but they're they're both. I mean, Bruce Campbell is a ham. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I would love to. I would love to see that I just think, to see I Bruce think Campbell. It would be a very physical performance as well, like you said. I would love to see Bruce Campbell do it just to see him attempt the accent. Yeah, because there were some. There were some mostly very bad Holmes adaptations 
several years ago, probably about 10 or 15 years ago now that they produced for the Hallmark channel. I think it was for like a cable channel and, and they were, they did like a couple of homes feature length, like TV movies and Matt Frewer played Holmes, And the most entertaining part of that is watching Matt Frewer attempt a British accent to play Sherlock Holmes. Um, yeah. Who's Matt Frewer? Matt Frewer. Um, have you seen the TNG episode with uh, the guy, the time traveler who visits the ship? Um, Professor Berlinghoff Rasmussen. Maybe. Okay. Do you, do you remember Max Headroom? Was that the guy, the CGI dude? Yeah. The guy who lived in the TV. Yeah. 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 The, the, yeah. That, that was Matt Frewer. Oh. Matt Frewer played Max Headroom, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't really know anything about him. Okay. He's not a bad actor in the right part, but never in a million years would I have cast him as Sherlock Holmes. Yes, yeah, Carl, that's exactly, that's that's the one I'm talking about. Because P uh, Ustinov yes. is, is Poirot. You, Peter yes. Ustinov is Poirot and Sachet is Perfector <sighs> Shop, yeah. Now, okay, help me out. Yeah. Isn't isn't he the one who did the voice of Prince John in Disney's Robin Hood? Peter Ustinov. Yeah. I believe so, yes. yes. I know. Oh, Correct. God, that movie. I love it. Rob the poor to feed the rich. Something to be <laughs> on this part. He's a... Yes. Uh -huh. And yes, uh -huh. and yes, <laughs> and yes, Philip Matt Frewer has been in a ton of stuff i'm sure if you I've don't recognize the name i'm sure something. i'm sure you i'm sure you have seen him in something because he's yeah. been in so much stuff but yeah i think the thing he's probably most known for is max headroom oh, all right so well okay so everybody don't forget to uh watch dana's festive friday I'm gonna files set that sucker up once we're out of here all right. Well, then I will update the video description of this after we're done so that the uh, the, the link will be in there. And then we'll see everybody. YouTube.com slash Dana Calderas Friday at 6 p.m. Oh. Eastern for the Festive Friday Files. That'll be cool. Last Friday break. Well, the only Friday break, actually. But <laughs> it's what it is. <sighs> All right. Good and night, then we'll everybody. Be back we'll be back next oh. week for part one away of the warrior in Deep Space Nine. So, yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye. And Kara, yes. So good. So good. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so good. <laughs>